Good morning, it is Phil to the Brim, and it is Friday, August 27th, and we are talking about the Lord positioning us. We've gone through a lot in the last couple of years, and there's been a lot of stirring, and the Lord is positioning His children. He's positioning you. Don't be afraid to step into what He's wanting for you. But our response needs to be, getting rid of anything that's a hindrance to us so that we have a flow through our lives that is powerful, that doesn't have any blockages, doesn't put us in a compromised place. Now remember, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Let's remain seated there. Let's not get distracted. Let us not uh, fall for the enemy's devices or deceptions. Now one of those things that can be a deception to Christians is unforgiveness. You know, many times I have prayed with people who have unforgiveness in their heart due to something that's happened, due to somebody that's hurt them or wounded them from their past, present situations, maybe family members. And so in some ways they think that the unforgiveness is okay and they almost view it as some form of superpower that when they're unforgiving, they have some form of power over the person that they haven't forgiven. But the truth is this, they are actually, or we are when we're unforgiving, actually controlled by that situation. And pretty much we are controlled by the enemy because the enemy is the author of unforgiveness. We are vessels of the grace of Jesus. And we came into a relationship with Christ, new creation, because of grace, because he forgave us. And now we must be forgiving people. Let me read to you scripture, Mark eleven twenty five. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. This is Jesus talking to his disciples, talking to the followers. We are to forgive. Now yesterday I talked about having a harboring unconfessed sin and I told you about how daily in the morning I always say, Lord, forgive me of my sins, cleanse me, search my heart, and go through a, a time to say, you know what, I want to make sure that I don't have offense in me. Make sure that I don't have an attitude towards somebody, or towards my spouse, or towards a situation, a church situation, some, but something that's going on, or a thought life that's not right. I search my heart for unconfessed sin. In the same way, I search my heart for any unforgiveness daily. I think that this is something that is a good practice. Let's say that we go and say, Lord, I want to search my heart. Now, this scripture in Mark chapter 11, Jesus is teaching, is talking about prayer. It's talking about prayer and searching your heart to make sure that there's no unforgiveness there because when there is, it blocks us. It blocks our relationship. It becomes a hindrance with our relationship with the Father, according to Jesus' teachings. So therefore, we must search our heart. The truth is this. Unforgiveness creates a domain in our spirit. It becomes the enemy's playground. This is one deception that many times Christians fall for. Now, I'm talking specifically to Christians here. Christians fall for the, the deception that unforgiveness is okay. It's not okay. And those results of unforgiveness, such as bitterness and resentment. If you are talking about something, a hurt, over and over and over again, how somebody hurt you, you know what you're doing? You have resentment because you're resending. Resentment is resent. I'm rescinding something because it hasn't been resolved within you. You haven't been free from it. You haven't let it go. When you're bringing up the past, when you're digging up, keeping that record of wrongs, remember when I talked about 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, the agape love of God, we do not keep records of wrong. Therefore, we must know that when we are saying, you know what, the agape love needs to flow through me, we cannot keep a record of wrong through resentment and have agape love flowing like a fountain, like a river through our lives. 
So we must address these things and let and allow the Holy Spirit to bring them up. Not reject them, not be um, super spiritual or self-righteous and say, oh no, I don't do that. And actually uh, not uh, receiving the correction of the Holy Spirit. When we're rescinding something, that is a huge red flag that we have unforgiveness in our spirit and it must be addressed. The other thing about unforgiveness is this, it hardens our heart. Unforgiveness hardens our heart. Ephesians 4.32 says this, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted. I want to say tender-hearted here. Because when we are unforgiving, actually it starts to harden our hearts. You know, Jesus even said that um, divorce was a result of hardened hearts. Now, we know that there's many reasons for divorce and there's biblical reasons to have a divorce and so it's, there's no condemnation in that. But one thing that we have to be aware of in our marital relationships, okay, and I'm talking about spousal relationships, is that we don't have a hardened heart due to bitterness and unforgiveness because it leads to what we would call many times people say, uh, irreconcilable differences. So there's not a biblical reason for divorce, like adultery or abuse, but rather it's just hardening of our hearts over time due to unforgiveness. And the Lord does not want us to do it. We are to be tender hearted, hearted. And one of the greatest testimonies of a Christian's life, now remember I'm saying to those Christians that don't have an abusive relationship and don't have adultery or fornication going on in their relationship. So please note that. But for those of us that are just simply having conflict in our relationship, when we are hardening our hearts, it is leading towards that sense of being split apart from one another. The enemy is in there. He wants that hardened heart so that we don't bring glory to God in our marital relationship. The Lord wants his children to bring glory to him through having healthy, godly marriages. Unforgiveness hardens the heart. You know, bitterness comes from unforgiveness and bitterness defiles not only you, but others. Hebrews 12, 15. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. Bitterness doesn't just stay within you. It actually pours out from you and defiles other relationships. The filter that you have when you're bitter has a bitter taste to it, has a bitter view to it, and it pours forth. It pours forth in your words, it pours forth in your spirit, it pours forth in your attitude, and it is dangerous. The scripture says, Hebrews 12, 15, see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. Now, you say, well, what does that mean, you know? Well, let's use the scripture in the book of Acts. Simon the sorcerer is a great example of this in Acts chapter 13, 8, 13. Acts chapter 8, verse 13, when Simon has uh, actually received salvation, according to the scripture. Acts 8, 13 says, Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. But something happens here. See, what uh, in Acts 18 through, 20, 18 through 24, the, the disciples come down to uh, pray over the Samaritans so that they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Simon wants this and Peter uh, says, you know what, you have bitterness in you. Let me read the scripture. Acts 8, 18, verse 20, Peter answered, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. See, P Simon wanted to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit without addressing the sin that he had in his heart. And it happened to be bitterness. So he said, let me try to buy this thing. Let me try to gain this spiritual power without addressing my bitterness. 
You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness. That you are full of bitterness. The situation is Simon has received salvation. However, he is full of bitterness and the Holy Spirit cannot flow through him like he's supposed to, the Holy Spirit wants to, he cannot be baptized with the Holy Spirit, that subsequent experience of baptism because he has not addressed the bitterness. Bitterness can block our filter and our receptivity. It is dangerous. Let us address unforgiveness in our hearts. Let us daily ask the Lord to cleanse us. We walk through a dirty world. Yes, there's challenges, but there is no uh, we have no excuse as Jesus' children to be unforgiving. Pray about this word. God bless you. You are positioned for power.